Today, I will introduce you to the history of Johnson Outboard Motors. But before I go any further I would like to invite you to use the subtitles and if necessary you can choose automatic translation to your desired language. This is a story that will reveal to you the successes in air, water, and land of the Johnson brothers. Before I take you back in time, I want to draw your attention to the fact that behind this brand sits years of development, testing, and numerous successes. From now on, every time you pull the rope or turn the ignition key, you'll be proud of your outboard's history. The original company that made Johnson Inboard Motors and Outboard Motors was the Johnson Brothers Motor Company of Terre Haute, Indiana, United States. Lou Johnson was the oldest of seven children born to Soren and Bertha Johnson. Lou was described as a natural leader and an innovator. Like Ola Vinrud, Lou Johnson conceived of the idea for a motor one hot day in 1903 when he had to row his 18-foot boat, 10 miles upstream to harvest walnuts. During this time, other inventors had similar visions and were working to develop outboards, the French manufactured Motogodil appeared about 1904, the Waterman, Avinrude, Lockwood, Coben, and Kale Motors, all competing designs. Lou's first engine was a single-cylinder, two-stroke, three-horsepower monster, weighing in at 150 pounds. By 1905, the Johnson brothers, Lou, Harry and Clarence, had perfected their creation to a single-cylinder, three-horsepower engine weighing only 65 pounds. With an interest in speed, the brothers expanded to both two- and four-cylinder inline models and tested them in the Black Demon, a 26-foot boat. While marine engines were the main focus of the Johnson brothers, they also developed an aircraft motor. The lightweight V-4 two-cycle motor produced 60 horsepower. Since the Johnsons had no aircraft on which to test the motor, they decided to build one. In 1910, seven years after the flight of Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Johnson brothers built the first American monoplane to actually take flight. Never having seen one, they constructed it from an article in a flight magazine. When most early aircraft were made of wood and fabric, there's used aluminum and nickel steel, when most landed on skids there's touched down on tricycle landing gear, the Johnson design was light years ahead of its time. The plane weighed 750 pounds, had a 36-foot wingspan and measured 34 feet from propeller to tail. The aircraft flew for the first time in August 8, 1911, with Lou at the controls. In fact, it flew twice that day, because on the initial flight Lou had to teach himself to fly. The monoplane quickly gave the brothers celebrity status, drawing invitations to attend county fairs and carnivals throughout the state. Visitors paid 25 cents to take a look at the machine. In addition, Lou piloted the plane in contests, once winning $1,000. The Johnson brothers continued to handcraft airplane and seaplane motors while building and selling marine motors and racing motorboats. It is interesting to note that the 4, 6, 8 and 12-cylinder V-type two-stroke engines that they did were unique. The most interesting of them is the V-12 two-stroke engine with 180 horsepower, which is the only one of its kind in the whole world. In the very high-speed two-stroke engines, there is no separate scavenging stroke, the great internal heat produces excessive temperature of the piston top, causing pre-ignition heating of the rings and prevents proper lubrication, thus causing the engine to slow down. With the Johnson engine this overheating is avoided with special design of the piston, which is cooled from the underside. The cool gas from the crank chamber is forced under compression through special cooling light plates, provided in the under portion of the piston at each stroke. This enables a piston to be used safely which tends to produce better compression and avoid detonations. Regarding the general construction features, the cylinder walls are of cast iron, but for the purpose of lightness, have polished aluminum water jackets pressed on. The crankcase is a one-piece casting, also of aluminum. The crankshaft is of Krupp's chrome nickel, steel, heat treated and the bearings are made of phosphorus bronze. Four synchronized carburetors provided the fuel and two Bosch magnetos spark for the spark plugs. 
It is interesting to note that a similar engine design was used in the aircraft engines produced by the Johnson brothers. This is a unique piece of craftsmanship for its time, and looking at it from today's point of view, making such a motor would be difficult for many companies. Two of these motors with a total power of 360 horsepower were installed on the Black Demon 3 boat. The last information I found about the boat is from the January 1935 at Motor Boating Magazine where on page 128 shows an advertisement for the Black Demon for sale. After that, the traces are lost in time. Sadly up to this moment it is unknown what happened to the boat and whether any of the engine has survived over the years. In this time the Johnsons needed investors to finance production of the aircraft. Unfortunately, this was not to become a reality because financiers saw no commercial value in the small plane, even though it flew for three years without a crash. Additionally, World War I was starting to raise its ugly head so necessary Bosch Magnetos made in Germany, became unavailable. Then on Easter Sunday of 1913 tragedy struck in the form of a tornado that ripped the Johnson factory from its foundation, destroying everything within. Because the family had no insurance, rebuilding was out of the question. Instead the brothers conceived of a new invention, a motor to propel a bicycle. With this new idea, the Johnson Motor Wheel Company was founded. Because the motor wheel was very hard on magnetos, burning them out as quickly as they could be replaced, the Johnsons began to discuss possible solutions with Warren Ripple, owner of the Quick Action Ignition Company in South Bend, Indiana. Ripple took a special interest in the manufacture of the motors and helped facilitate a move of the Johnson Motor Wheel Company to South Bend in March 1918. The motor wheel was very successful, selling more than 17,000 units during the years it was manufactured. However, the Johnson Motor Wheel Company went out of business in 1921 with the onset of the recession. Coming off of this recent disappointment, the Johnson brothers began to look again at the marine industry. The first prototype outboard motor was tested in the spring of 1921 in a lightweight boat built by Warren Conover. The test was successful and the Johnson Motor Company was incorporated one month later in South Bend, Indiana. Warren Ripple was named as the company's first president. The first Johnson outboard motor was produced on December 19, 1921. The two-horsepower twin engine was made largely of aluminum alloys, weighed only 35 pounds and featured a full pivot reverse. In 1922, the Johnson brothers purchased a license from the Holt brothers of the Pentaverken company in Skov, Sweden to use one of their patented inventions for outboard motors on the Johnson outboards. In that same year, Johnson introduced the light twin and the water bug. Both designs won recognition in the National Motor Boat Show that year and the company received orders for 3,429 units. Each unit sold for $140. The following year, orders reached 7,000 units. As Johnson Motor Company began to win acclaim and market share, other companies such as Avinrud, Elto, Lockwood and Kale Outboard Motors began to feel the pressure. At that time, Ola Vinrud created a new Elto outboard motor and began to compete with the Avinrud company he had originally created with magnate Chris Meyer. Each of these brands is fighting for its marketplace, but some of them will disappear over time and others will become part of the created Outboard Motors Corporation, OMC. In the next episode we will look at the story of Ola Vinrud and the successes of a genius inventor, but before we pull the curtain of history I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to the Boat Motors channel yet to do so. Thank you for watching the video.